Hey, it's Velveteers, and I'm going in the DMs with Mascarilla. Okay, I'm 22, I'm from Harlem, but I've lived all over and I just make music in my bedroom. So my parents got divorced when I was young, so we already lived in a bunch of apartments in New York because we grew up with not a lot of money and then like as my mom went up the line, we just started living in better and better places and then so she- What did your mom do? She started a school in Manhattan. It's like a non-charter, it's a, What's it called? It's a nonprofit charter school and it's like all inclusive. So kids with autism and Down syndrome, they're not like separated into different classes. They're actually put in the class with like, they're called typically developed kids. Um, Cause they found like so many studies have shown like typically developed kids end up like being more generous and nice when they like coexist with these kids with mental disabilities. And these kids also do so much better educationally when they work with kids who are there to help them. So it's just like this cohesive, symbiotic relationship. So did you go to that school? I didn't go there, um, but I taught there. I volunteered there since I was little. So I taught there like kindergarten to eighth grade, helped with those kids. I was like a one-to-one -one and a nanny for kids with Down syndrome and autism. And then uh, we moved upstate, blah, blah, blah. And she ended up getting a job in an apartment in Beijing. So then for like two or three years, I lived back and forth from China to New York, which was crazy. And how old were you? That was when I was like 18. So what was it like being an 18 year old living in China? It was super lonely. Um, it was cool because it was really humbling because you get there and you meet people from all over and we have all these notions from everything we see on the news of like what other places are supposed to be like like this idea of like Africa and like the way we like put it into this box of being like kids from Africa are starving, you know, that whole thing. And then like you actually go and meet people from Kenya who are like so established and like such like beautiful people. And it's like, they're not living in poverty. Like they're, I just feel like we have these notions about other countries. And then once you actually go, it's like China's not this malicious place that hates Americans. They actually like really welcome you. So it was really humbling. So then what happened after that? After going back and forth between China and New York, 18 to 20, right? Yeah, something like that. A lot was happening in between and during because I was doing like some really bad drugs and doing some really bad things. So China was kind of like, we called it like my rehab. So uh, I would go there so that way I could have no contact with any of my friends in America and just like completely isolate myself in the room and like go through withdrawals. And that was the first time I ever like put a song out on SoundCloud was I was just like going through these terrible withdrawals in my bedroom alone and like couldn't go anywhere because I didn't speak Chinese. So I just like opened up GarageBand and just like made a beat on my iPad and sang into my Apple headphones and just like put it out there under the name Velveteers. And like, I didn't think anything would happen. Like I didn't tell anyone in my life that it was me. And like, I, I never showed my face or anything. I wanted it to be like, I was pretty embarrassed because I thought it was bad. And the few people I did show always told me it was like trash. Like they told me like I was making like trash music and I couldn't sing. So I just kept it really private. And then once it started picking up and like a star, he found my song and put it on his channel. Then I was like, I think I might tell my mom because I'm kind of proud right now. So that's how that happened. So what did your mom think of it? Um, I think at first it was scary because she didn't understand the idea of like, because I never finished high school. And I think she was scared that I would think that me doing good with music meant I didn't have to finish. I think it was like like really happy for me that I had this vice that wasn't drugs or partying, but also like a little scared that I would not think that I need to be a like productive member of society. Cause if it doesn't, I don't know, like back in her day, it wasn't like you could just pay rent with digital distribution, you know? It was like you had to be like the next Britney or the next Madonna, but now it's so different. It's like, there, there's like hundreds of us just like getting by by just making music. But now she understands that and like she couldn't be happier. And um, your dad, you mentioned that your parents split. Yeah. What's the story with him? Um, we were close when I was younger, but uh, we stopped talking when I was like 14, probably. Uh, just some stuff happened and just like grew more and more distant. Um, yeah, I don't really talk to him. I don't really keep up with him. 
So does he have any idea that you're doing music or has it just been so long? You're just so disconnected. He definitely knows and he wants to be a part of it and he's proud, but I, uh, just for personal reasons, like I just separated myself from that entire situation. So, I mean, he's proud, he knows what's up. He always like texts me when I make a new song, he's like, good job. And it's just like, it's good to know, uh, but we just don't have a relationship like that. Um, do you have any siblings? I have an older sister, she's 26. Um, we're also not that close anymore. She's really close with my dad. And then I have a half brother and sister, my mom's stepdad and my mom who live in China and they're like my everything, like everything. And it's Lars and Nona. They're stupid young, but I forget. That. I think they're like 11 and 12, 12 and 13. So your mom still lives in China? Yeah. Is that hard? that she's kind of halfway across the world and you're out in LA kind of finding yourself and doing music. Yeah, it's it's like since I don't talk to my dad that much, it's weird not having like anybody. It feels like I have nobody in the States that like family-wise that I can like run to, you know, and call. But I have all these like, we call them like second moms. I have like basically like five moms. And it's cause like my mom always says like, I, she couldn't do it on her own. Like there needs to be five of them to take care of me cause I was such a, Buckhead, and uh, they live in like Georgia and New York. So like, if I have an emergency, I always like go see these like other moms that I have that have like saved my life and always been there for me. So I know I have people everywhere watching out for me, and I can fly to her if I need to. But uh, I'm just glad that she's like happy and in a healthy place and like doing what she wants to be doing, and then I'm here doing what I want to be doing. So it was kind of a domino effect, kind of just like an explosion too. It was like. I mean, I started smoking weed when I was like 12, 13 and cigarettes and just like trying to be cool and like getting 40s like at the bodegas. And then it just started moving up. Like it went up to Adderall and um, like Xanax and Klonopins. And then I was getting kicked out of schools for like selling Adderall. And then it just kept going up and up. And then I had like my ecstasy phase and then like my acid and shrooms phase. And then it just got like deeper and deeper until I was doing like the really hard dirt stuff then that kind of that stuff just like once you get to the point where like you're doing like opiates like hard or like meth hard then like your life kind of falls apart for you like you don't really make the choice to say I'm gonna stop doing it your life kind of just like falls apart around you and you lose like everything you ever cared about and then you're like wow I'm never doing that again so you mentioned that going to China was almost like your rehab yeah where are you at now in that process I'm like almost two years uh, sober from heroin, which is crazy to think wow. about now. Cause the first time I did it, I was 16 and it was my first time running away from home. And there was these like, there was like a couple in their late twenties and they kind of took me in. And I didn't real you don't realize how like toxic a situation is. I just thought I was cool for hanging out with older kids. And they would just like give me bumps every once in a while. And I didn't really know what I was doing. And then like, a couple years later, met a guy way older than me, same thing, just like a couple bumps of stuff. And then before you know it, you're just like doing something every day. And like, it's never what I wanted to be or what I wanted to do, but I just got too deep into it. That's a big thing with it is, uh, if you're not ready to stop doing those kinds of things, then you're never gonna stop because there's always gonna be somebody. There's always gonna be a party or a show and in this scene, like if I go to a show, I know I'm gonna be around people that are doing things. And like, it's just my choice I have to make that after my show, I'm just gonna like get my bag and go home and not go to the after parties because I know what's gonna happen. And it's just, it's completely a personal choice. You just have to be strong about it and just like stay away from it. Uh, Cause this scene is like really full of that. Like it's a lot of sad kids who cope uh, in a lot of the wrong ways. And the only common ground that's good is that we all cope with music, but yeah. Um, got a bunch of random ones. See, I was thinking this was gonna be funnier, so I like <laughs> picked some funny ones. I got a lot of tattoo questions. So I got a, what's your favorite tattoo you have? And I also got a, what's your least favorite tattoo? And they were back to back, so it was impressive. Um, my tattoos are really funny to me because a lot of people ask me about them. Um, and they're always like, why'd you get all those? Like, what's the story? And I'm like, I was like, so gone for all of them. Like, 
I was like so out of it for most of them. So sadly, I don't have like a cool story. It's just mostly like, if I feel like I'm impulsive, I'm gonna do something stupid. Like instead of doing something stupid, I just go and get a tattoo. So like, that's just what these are. They're like, you know, some people have scars, some people pop pills, like I just get tattoos. <laughs> um, I think my favorite one is my hand girl. Did I say baby girl on my knuckles? They were my favorite, but then Fat Nick got baby boy. Oh, and I was like, damn it. Um, and I have Lola Bunny on my leg. She's my favorite. And my least favorite one is, I have a lot that I, I mean, they're all fine. I don't really care. But I have this one on like my leg right here. Um, and then after I got it, I didn't even like know what I was getting. I was just like really drunk and picked one. And then I went on this girl's Instagram and I found out she like hates when people get her art tattooed. And I found out way too late. And she like will screenshot people that got her art tattooed because I thought it was like, I'm, I'm like, I'm like respecting your art, you know, like I'm getting it on my body forever, but she hates it. And she's like, you're copying my art. And like, oh my that's my specific thing. And I was just like, oh, now it's really on me forever. A lot of people wanted to know how I got the name Velveteers and does it mean anything special to me? And I always think it's a really dumb story, so I never told anyone. So this is like the first ever time telling. Um, it was just my like uh, top damage rogue on World of Warcraft. <laughs> and it was back when I did a lot of ketamine. And for some reason I like was sitting there like writing names for my new characters because I like a rogue and a hunter um, and a priest. And I just wanted to like come up with the best names possible. And when I thought of Velveteers, like for some reason I was like, this is genius. So then that was like every day, like I had a big problem with WoW, I was playing it way too much. And Velveteers was just like, that was my, that was my girl. That was my rogue. Like we killed it. We got like top damage every time. So that's Velveteers. <laughs> and it is special to me too, because like my ex who passed away, like he showed me WoW and like he was with me when I thought of the name of Velveteers and he like showed me SoundCloud and he was like the first person to ever be like, you should sing. And I was like, hell no, like I'm not singing like, I don't want people to hear that. And he like really pushed me and he like showed me bones and he showed me like young lean, you know, and all these people. And so it means a lot to me. I got a lot of questions that are like, how do you deal with uh, pain and like suicide and anxiety and all that? Cause it's like pretty evident in my music that I'm like severely depressed and like the biggest way I cope with it is music, but some people don't have that convenience that they can just like sing and put it out there. Um, some people don't have like an artistic way to put it out. Um, and it sounds so corny because I hated people telling me this when I was younger, but uh, it really is about like getting outside, and, like not sitting in your bed and like seriously, like, like doing like 10 minutes of yoga a day and like actually drinking water. And I hated when people told me that. I was like, like, I was like, that won't help me. Like drinking water will not help me. And then like now I drink water and like it actually helps me. And like my mood swings are still there. There's still like really, really extreme highs and really extreme lows, but just like eating healthier and finding something, some form of art, like something you're passionate about is gonna get you out of that rut. Cause then like now, if I'm really, really sad, like if something happens and I just wanna like cry and lock myself in my room, I'm like, oh, like the only positive is I can write a song about this and this song's gonna be better than my songs where I don't really care what I'm writing about. Cause like all the music I've made that's done the best, like I've made when I've just been like so close to the edge, like so suicidal. And I was like, the only thing I can do is write a song about it. And like, that's what made uh, me able to live out in LA and make music is that people relate to that. I don't think people realize how much everyone feels that way inside. So if you just put it out there, people are gonna, they're gonna respond positively and it's gonna help you both. This person said, when you were little, what did you wanna be when you grew up? And I had, a, I had quite a few things I wanted to be. So I definitely wanted to be the first female president. That was big for me, but I definitely don't want to be that anymore. Um, I wanted to be, the first girl on the Yankees really bad. Like my lucky number was number two because Derek Jeter and I went to a lot of Yankee games growing up. And I always just wanted to be like the first girl to do something. <laughs> um, now I don't feel that way anymore because now I know there's just like so many girls doing everything um, that I don't need to be like the first to do it. I just want to be like part of this legacy of women who like really break boundaries as being like the first one to do it. Or like the second, third, fourth, just being a part of it would be so cool. Like, why isn't there a girl in the Yankees yet? 
Like, oh, that could still be me. Yeah. I, mean, I also know. wanted to be famous really bad. Yeah. Like, really bad. Like, I would make my parents, like, I would, like, put name tags on the couches when their friends would come over on the weekend. And I would make them pay me, like, a quarter each to come to my show. And I would, like, set up a table and a piano. And I would, like, sing for them and, like, put on this whole show with, like, acting and everything. Whoa. And I, I always really wanted to be famous. Like, really bad. I wanted to be Taylor Swift so bad. So now that you're experiencing, oh, like, a little bit of fame, you still want to be really famous? Or are you seeing maybe some of the downsides of it? Or? Um, there are so many downsides. But it's just, like, everything literally in life. Like, there's an equal amount of bad and good. Like... I get to make music to pay my rent. That's like, that's been my dream forever. Like I could have never imagined living in Cali off music. That's like it, like I am blessed, I am happy. But then it's also like, it's like, like swimming in an ego pool. And like, you don't really know who has your back. You don't really know if anyone's genuine. And then it's a lot of like, you have to think about yourself every day. I have to think about like, what am I gonna post? And like, what am I gonna look like? And then like I get in these thoughts at night and I'm like, I'm so selfish because like every day I think about my music and what I'm doing and I'm not even thinking about like literally like outside of my apartment door what's going on. So then I get this like, it's like a mixed thing in my head of like, am I doing this just for myself or is it actually helping people or like, should I be doing more? It's just, it's confusing. There's so much that comes with being a girl doing this. So much. Um, it's like, some days I want to dress cute, you know, and like post a picture on Instagram with like a skirt and like a tank top or something. And then I'm like, oh, but like, I don't want to be sexualized. Like I still want people to just focus on the music. So then I'm like, maybe I should butch it down and like wear a t-shirt and sweatpants. And like, maybe I should just post selfies, like looking really ugly to remind people that they don't need to be pretty to like make good art. Like that has nothing to do with it. And it's really confusing. Cause yeah, it's like, I don't think a lot of guys have to like really just sit there and like scroll through and like really think, like really meticulously think like what image am I portraying? Cause when I think about it, I have a little sister and I'm thinking, what do I want her to look up to, you know? So I try and have this balance of like, I don't know, like I, I truly don't really uh, try very hard with my image online just cause I'm not good at it. Like I know a lot of people have these like cohesive Instagrams and I'm like jealous of it cause it looks so good. But like, it's, it's really complicated. You never know what you're putting out there. Cause you post one thing with like your boobs looking good and then the whole internet's like, that's it. That's all they care about. And that's really scary. And that's the big reason I don't do a lot of interviews or like a lot of like even music videos. Cause I'm really scared of being put in a box. Cause I think the second a girl is put in a box they can never get out of it. Like. I think a guy can like go through like a lot of different phases, but I think like if a girl messes up once, like that's it, like that's her image. Like she's that slut, she's that hoe. And it's like, I just want people to think about the music and nothing else. But you have to be, you have to be present on all social media platforms. So you can't just choose to like tap out of that. But it's definitely a big thought process for me of like, what am I gonna try and make these young girls like look up to? Which is why I'm glad that I quit drugs, because now I can, like, I used to, like, when I started making music, I used to, like, have videos where I was, like, doing drugs. And it's really nice being able to post, like, hey, guys, like, I'm sober now. And, like, I want you guys to be sober, because then you get all these DMs, like, hey, I'm, like, four weeks sober because of you. And it's, like, nothing feels better than that. Like, literally nothing. That sucked going through, because, you know, I was uh, going through, like, a very public breakup. And... People forget that you're human for a second. They really do. And it's like, not only are you going through this personal heartbreak and your life's changing, you know? Sorry. And you're going to like, it's a big deal when you're moving on from someone in life. Um, so to have like all my DMs every day, I had to turn my DMs off. I had to turn my comments off because it was just like so much hate of just like, you should have stayed with him. And then I'm like, who are you? Like, how do you know who I should be with? And like, what do you know about me? And then it's like, your music was better with him. It's like, what are you saying? Like, it made no sense to me. Person said, who were your favorite artists growing up? And do you think there'll be more girls in the cloud rap scene in the near future? Um, my favorite artists growing up were a lot different than a lot of these kids. Uh, Cause I feel like everyone listened to a lot of like, heavy bands 
and they have like all these people they can name drop but i listen to like music with my mom like fiona apple and like the indigo what are they called what the indigo girls something like that it was like fiona apple regina specter like all these like really mellow women singers and i was never into like any like hardcore bands or metal or any of that scene like this whole like emo scene i feel like so disconnected from it um because i didn't really ever get into that i just really like the, my biggest artist i will forever look up to is fiona apple because she had like this way about her like her writing and like you could feel her emotion in her songs and that's something i'll always admire and about girls being in the scene more i feel like there's a lot of girls in the scene they just aren't talked about a lot um like my favorite girl rapper right now is china and she's known as like i think his name is dash or something it's his girlfriend but like if she's just known as like a rapper's girlfriend but she is killing it like she is killing it she's so good she has like this low raspy like rap voice and she's so good um i think it's a good year for women right now because it's popular now to like you know it's popular to support women which it has to happen it has to be a meme or else it's not cool but i think it's more just like you gotta just do it like against all odds if it feels like it's a male dominated scene or if it feels like you're in the studio and you're the only girl there it's like you just gotta do it like you just gotta go for it you gotta make the music you gotta have the, you gotta have the talent too like you gotta make it good like make it your own make it good don't ever worry about like the ratio of guys to girls in the room just like be the star in the room you know that's what i feel like you gotta do at this point point. and ask me how do i flex on my ex that's a good one um i tried flexing on my ex by like faking happiness and like making it seem like i was like so cool and like doing so good not the way to do it don't do that what you do is work really hard like do your thing focus on yourself make your money talk to your mom you know be nice to people and then just like work on yourself like the only way to flex on people from your past is just like working really hard at what you love to do and just like keep going keep going also like why would you even care about them like it shouldn't be like your goal shouldn't be like if i do good in life it's because i want to flex on people no 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 like no it's got to be like flex on your on your depression like flex on yourself almost like i like every time i make music i'm like i want to flex on my old self like the, myself that hated me and hated what i was doing and was like you're never going to be shit hannah like you're always going to be like a drug addict and nothing it's like everything everyone told me and it's like that's what i'm trying to flex on now is like i'm not gonna be that person that everyone thought i was i'm not gonna be like a high school dropout who like was addicted to heroin and like did all that you can't have those labels on me so just by making music and focusing on myself and working really hard and just like i want my mom to be proud i want my sister to be proud and like that's that's the goal of flexing like that's it <laughs>